Hello and welcome to the Our Dad Stamps podcast. My name is Pete West and I've spent half a lifetime collecting stamps and more than 10 years buying and selling them. In these podcasts I want to share some personal stories, tips and tricks that I've learned along the way and maybe encourage a few non-philatelists to take up this fascinating and absorbing hobby. I hope you enjoy the podcast. Welcome to another Our Dad Stamps podcast. My name is Pete. And I'm Sheila. And what are we talking about today, Pete? Well, today we're going to talk about the equipment that you need to be a stamp collector. What you actually need and what really just amounts to expensive toys. And hopefully we'll decide which is which. Okay. The first thing you're obviously going to need is some stamps. But with that aside, what are you going to do with the stamps? Where are you going to put them? An easy answer is stick them in a tin, and and that is perfectly acceptable if that's what you want to do with them. But most people, I suggest, would want to stick them in some sort of album. You need to decide what sort of album you want to put them in and how you want to display the stamps. And I would suggest the easiest, certainly for me, I found the easiest type of album to buy is a stock album. These cost about £10 for a 16-page album, which you can store quite a few stamps in. They are very easy to use. You need nothing else. The pages are quite stiff card and they have strips of cellophane going across in rows, usually about nine or ten rows of cellophane. And the stamps just slide in behind the cellophane so you've got a ready display of all your stamps without having to go to any bother. And as I said, they're quite cheap. You can buy 16-page, 32-page, 64-page stock albums depending on which ones you want and you can expand as your collection that grows. Are these double-sided pages or just one side? Yes, double-sided. They are double-sided. So it's 16 pages but 32 sides. So you can fit quite a few stamps in there, uh, particularly in the 64-page one, which gives you 128 sides. There are also, on the same lines, stock pages, which are loose-leaf pages that you can stick in an ordinary binder. And they come in like two-ring, four-ring binders, much the same as as you get paper. paper So like a lever arch file and you can just add the pages as you want, take out the pages and move them around. Exactly so. And it has the advantage that you can move them around. The thing I don't like about those is that in a two ring or four ring binder, the pages are not that securely held. And when you fill the page with stamps, it starts to weigh quite a lot. So if you're standing the book up in a the bookshelf case, and the bookcase yeah. then the pages flap about a bit and it's in my view it's not as good it's not as secure as as having an actual stock album but i guess you could use those little sort of polo mint hole reinforcers yeah you you can certainly reinforce the holes but the point i was trying to make is that the pages actually move around you know the the top of the page will start to fall inwards or outwards or start to sag And I just don't find them secure enough. They certainly suit some people and they have the advantage that you can move them around. So if you get some new ones that fit in front of the ones you've already got, then you can just stick another page in. So for somebody starting out, that might be a really good option as their first It's certainly a cheap option because you can buy as many pages as you want and most people have got a, a ring binder, so it can go into that. So I have a question then. So when somebody starts stamp collecting, do most people say, right, I'm going to collect stamps from the UK. I'm going to collect stamps prior to a certain year. I'm going to collect special celebration stamps. That is entirely up to individuals. I guess most people, to begin with, collect everything. But There are so many stamps in the world, that's an impossible task. So after a short while, then people will generally specialise. But everybody has their their own tastes, and and it really depends what you like. You know, if if you like trains, then you might want to collect stamps with trains. If you like royalty, you might want to collect stamps on the royals. It varies to to people's taste, and, and everybody has their own preference. Right. Once you start building a collection, then really 
most people will then want to display it nicely. A stock book's fine for holding the stamps, but once you want to start to put it in a nice display, you probably want something a little bit more special. And that's where the, the more traditional stamp album comes into place. These are ready-made albums that have blank pages or generally pages with tiny squares on them. And the squares are there so you could line up the stamps easier. And you affix the stamps to the pages and you may want to write a description about the stamps or something. So you need something a bit more than just a stock album. And that's when you start buying other type of albums. Yeah, but hang on, hang on a second. If you're buying this type of album with the square pages, how are you sticking the stamps on? Has it got the cellophane rows? That's my next answer. Once you start buying those sort of albums, and they come in several ways. There's what they call springback albums, where you just fold the covers back, slot the pages in, and the spring in the spine holds the pages in place. You can also get ring binders, but the specialist stamp ones have 20, 25 rings on them, not just the four or five, so that they do hold the pages in securely. It's personal preference which type you prefer. The Springback albums tend to be cheaper, but there's not a lot of difference between them. So, so how much are we talking about? Springback album will cost you about £25, complete with about 50 sheets of paper, and you can buy replacement or extra sheets easily. So I'm guessing as you start collecting and you know what you're going to specialise in and how you like to display your stamps, that's when you start looking at the different options on yeah. how, how yeah. what type of albums you And, and, and there's a myriad of albums out there that you can use. But as you so rightly said, you then need to think about how you want to mount them on the pages. And there's two methods, or two recognised methods. I've actually come across albums where they've been stuck in with sellotape or glued into place, which is... Not a great idea because that ruins the stamp completely. But the two recognised methods, you, you can either buy what's called stamp hinges and they are basically folded pieces of, I don't know, cellophane I suppose it is, which one side sticks to the stamp and the folded bit then sticks onto the page of the album and it holds the stamp firmly in place. So you need four per stamp or two no, per stamp? No, just one. Just one. Just one in the middle of the stamp. These have been used almost since stamp collecting started. So you just put these on the page wherever you want? You, you you attach one bit to the back of the stamp and it's really folded. Then the other side of the, the folded bit sticks onto the page. Oh, and then you so you put the stamp in the hingey thing and then that goes actually, the whole thing goes onto the page. Yeah. The hinges are really cheap. You can buy a packet of a thousand hinges for a couple of pounds. So it's a very cheap and effective way of doing it. The problem with using hinges is it can damage the stamp particularly with mint stamps, stamps that have never been used, it will leave a mark on the stamp. And if you're a serious collector, you want a pristine stamp. And it actually sounds quite fiddly, attaching it to the stamp and then attaching it to the it's page. A, it's a little bit fiddly, but you soon get used to doing it. And as I said, when I first started collecting 50, 60 years ago, really that was the only way. As I said, it's a cheap, effective way of doing it, but you do run the risk of damaging stamps particularly mint stamps. They will be worth less just because you've stuck a hinge on them. The other way is there's specialty mounts made now, which are basically little sleeves or little envelopes the size of the stamp, where the back of it is gummed, so you can stick it onto the page, but you can slide the stamp into the middle. So it's, so it's like got a mini a, packet. So it's a mini packet. It's got a cellophane front, a gummed back, and there's two ways to do it. Either you can lift up from one side and slide the stamp in, or it opens up in the middle and you can slide the stamp in. But either way, you slide the stamp in and it just sits in its little packet on the page. And then you stick the packet to the page. And then you stick the packet to the page. Um, that's basically what they are. They are much better. They don't damage the stamp at all. They don't affect the stamp. They still look good. And you can get them with a black background or a clear background. And the black background actually is quite nice because it frames the stamp. But they're not cheap. You're paying three or four pounds for a packet of 50 as opposed to two pounds for a thousand. And if you've got a decent collection of, you know, a few thousand stamps, that's a lot of money. So you have to weigh up the costs which way you want to do it. Certainly my personal collection is stuck in with mounts, not with hinges. But I was prepared to pay the expense. It depends how serious you are at collecting, really. And talking on how serious you are at collecting, we talked about albums and you can buy Springback albums for £25 and ring binders for slightly more. If you really want to push the boat out, 
there's a, a set of albums you can buy which are designed to hold every single King George V stamp that was issued. And there's a separate place for each of those stamps for each country in the Commonwealth. So they're like pre-printed pages. Pre -pr yeah. It's an eight-volume album. Just to buy the album is £900. So you've got to be a pretty serious collector if you want to go to that level. That's before you buy any stamps. But I have to say, though, if that is your specialist area, it's specially printed albums. So I imagine they're quite nice with a bit of gold on the spine. They do look very nice, The yeah. pages have been printed with particular information about the stamp, I imagine, and then your job is to fill those blank pages. Yes, yes that's true. Um, and, you know, they they do look nice, but they're expensive. And you can do the same sort of thing for individual countries as well. Like me, I collect multi stamps. I could buy one of those for just multi stamps and it would have every single multi stamp through it. My only gripe with that is I also like to collect varieties or errors on stamps and there's no space for any of those in the pre printed album. Like everything in stamp collecting, you have plenty of choice and you just have to make your mind up what you want to do. So we've got your album and all the stamps are sitting in the album, but how do you decide where to put the stamps in the album? And that's where you really need a catalogue. A stamp catalogue is a list. Basically, it's a, a list of all the stamps that have been issued. And they come in various guises. The standard one that is called the simplified catalogue. And that just lists each stamp with no varieties, no references to watermarks or colour variations or anything. Just the basic stamp and a guide price of what it is. The trouble with the catalogues is, once again, they're expensive. A set of whole world catalogues from Stanley Gibbons is in six volumes, because there are so many stamps issued in the world, and that costs you £300. So hang on a second, Stanley Gibbons do a catalogue which has every single stamp in the world, yep. and it's £300. Yes. But what information that. does it give you? So it's got the stamp so, and the so price. So you but... get... You, you generally get a picture of one of a set of the stamps or a couple of the stamps in the set. You get the date it was issued, possibly the printer, who printed it or who designed the stamp. And as I said, a guide price of what it's worth. You really need some form of catalogue because otherwise you, you don't know when the stamp was produced. You don't know. In some cases, it's difficult to find what country it produced it. So it has a minimum of minimal information. It has minimal information, but it does have it on, as I said, every single stamp that... And is that issued. published every year? Cause presumably it's, published, stamps... it's published every year, updated every year, and as I said, it costs you about £300. It's a lot of money, and I actually am currently using a 15-year-old version, which is an ideal, but I do have several other recent specialised catalogues which I use all the time. And they're much more relevant to the stamps that I do collect. For those of you not in the UK, if you want to buy Scott's version, which is the American recognised catalogue producer, that comes in 12 volumes. And each of those volumes is about $100 each. But that does have the advantage you can buy the volumes you want rather than having to buy the whole lot together. And is that just American stamps? In no, the that, albums? that once again is 12 volumes will cover the whole, oh, the whole world. world. One volume, I believe, is, is just for American stamps. So, But likewise, with Stanley Gibbons, you can buy an album just British stamps, which is about £50, £60. Pound. Uh, you can buy a catalogue of just Commonwealth stamps against £50, £60. Pound. There are lots of specialist catalogues you can buy, but you really do need some sort of catalogue. The good news is... There is one online that's free. It's been building over the last, I guess it's about 10 years. I'm not sure when I first noticed it, but it, they've been gradually adding to it and, and making it better. It does cover virtually, I haven't found stamps that aren't on there yet. So I'm assuming by now it covers every single stamp that's been issued. I find using an online one more difficult than actually having a book because with a book, you can, if you're not sure when the stamp was issued, you can keep turning pages till you find a picture of it. On the online version, it does show every single stamp. And yes, you can turn pages online. I just find turning pages online more difficult. But maybe that's an age thing. Maybe if you're younger, you might prefer using the online version. But the online hasn't got as much information as it has in the actual catalogue. From the simplified catalogue, it's got more or less the same. There's not a lot of difference. What it doesn't have 
is any variations, any colour, shade differences and things like that. But as a basic catalogue, it's good. And I would suggest it's certainly worth looking at. And, and who is this by? It's called Stamp World, www.stampworld.com. Right, so we um, don't think it's anything to do with Stanley Gibbons. It's nothing to do with Stanley Gibbons. Oh, right. Stanley okay. Gibbons do do their own online catalogue as well, which I used a few years ago, but they've updated it and I haven't looked at the new one. So that's worth investigating too. Because surely it must make more sense to put everything online and then you can add detail, you know, keep updating yeah. the information and the value. Indeed, and that's the way it's moving. More and more companies are putting their things online. Scots have got theirs online as well now. But there's still people like me that prefer having a, a book and looking through a book. And I still find it easier with a physical catalogue. But then maybe I'm a bit of a dinosaur. <laughs> okay, so the next things that you're going to need, and possibly before you get albums and catalogues, is a good set of tweezers. When you're handling stamps, no matter how clean your hands are, they contain elements of grease and dirt. If you pass these onto the stamps over time, it's going to damage the stamp. Now, it's not going to make much difference to a last year's Christmas stamp that's worth tons. But if you've come across a, you know, a thousand pound stamp or even a 10,000 pound stamp, then your greasy fingers are going to damage it and eventually will affect the value of the stamp. So you need to invest in some tweezers. They're only about a fiver. They're not particularly expensive. They come in various guises. There's ones with round ends, there's one with square ends, there's one with fine points. I personally use what's called a spade tweezers, which has got like a rectangle at the end and it looks in the shape of a spade. I find them much easier to use and you can grip the stamp easily. My worry with the fine point tweezers is that you could actually stick the point through the stamp and damage it, so I don't tend to use those. Okay, and one final thing before we round up today's episode is a magnifying glass. You're going to need some way to look closely at the stamp. There's lots of variations in stamps. There's lots of slight differences which can affect the value and you need to be able to see them. And the type of magnifier you get would depend A, on how good your eyesight is and B, how serious you are about collecting that particular type of stamp. Because with some stamps, there are loads of minor differences that you can spot with magnifying glasses. And again, basic magnifying glass is only £10, so they're not too expensive. I think the one I've got, it's quite a big one, but it's times 10 magnification. Usually times 10 is the biggest magnification you get. But the other thing I use when I want to look at it really closely is a scanner. You scan the stamps in, look on your computer, I can blow it up to any size I want. And I find that when I want to look in real detail, I find that the best method much easier to use than a, than a magnifying glass. I think that's a really good tip, that using technology. Yeah, and even cheaper than that is most phones now have a good camera on them and you can take a picture of on your phone and just pinch it out to get to the detail you want. So, oh my God, so modern it, it technology works, yeah. is hauling yeah. stamps into the 21st century. <laughs> I mean, if you really want, you know, if you really want to splash out on expensive toys, you can buy specific uh, microscopes specifically made for stamps which will blow it up to 500 times magnification. But you're looking at 150, 200 pounds for one of those. So you probably don't need to so, go to that unless you are a serious so, yeah, collector. Uh, and, and even then, as I said, a scanner for me works much better. So that's my tip for the day. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> okay, well that will wrap up today's episode. There are more things that I think you should get and we will talk about those in next week's podcast. But until then, thank you for listening and we'll speak to you again next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to my podcast. I hope you've enjoyed it and maybe you've learnt a little too. I would love to hear from you with your tips and stories. I can be found on Facebook and Instagram as Our Dad Stamps, as well as through my online shops at eBay and Delcamp. Listen again next week for another episode of the Our Dad Stamps podcast.